so good morning in this session we are going to discuss the forward kinematics in which we are going to discuss the ds parameters of two popularly known manipulators one is called as a skara robot the other one is called as a articulated robot so first of all we'll discuss about the skara robot then thereafter we'll discuss about the five axis articulated robot and then eventually we'll go to the geometrical validation of both the robots so first of all regarding the skara robot we have this line diagram of the robot first of all we need to understand what are the degrees of of freedom of uh, this robot so first degree of freedom is about this which is called as the theta 1 angle so then you have the second joint over here uh, this is also theta 2 and then there is a joint over here about which z3 movement the vertical d3 axis prismatic joint and then finally you have this uh, theta 4 about which the final tool can roll so these are the four degrees of freedom of this uh, scara robot so first of all we need to understand how to do the frame assignment we have mentioned that we need to draw in finite lines so this is the first line passing through theta 1 second line passing through theta 2 and the final line which is passing through theta 3 or you can say joint 3 and joint 4 axis so these are the infinite lines so first of all we need to understand like this is the uh, location of uh, z1 axis z2 axis and finally you have z3 and z4 axis so first of all we need to mark the origin of first frame so we know that z1 z2 axis are parallel and there is a common perpendicular so there are infinite perpendiculars possible let's take the perpendicular along the link length this is the link length so this is the direction of this perpendicular and where this perpendicular intersect so we have this direction of x1 so this is our location of frame 1 so let's say this is z1 and this is the direction of x1 so then you have z2 because it's assembly robot so z2 direction is downwards so then you have z3 direction and z4 direction all, all directions are downwards in this because it has to do the assembly operation so the direction of z2 can be taken upward or downwards so let's take it downwards in this case so next the location of uh, z2 so again you can see z2 z3 are parallel so there is a common perpendicular so this is the location of z2 and direction of uh, z3 frame the reason being because this is a prismatic joint and this frame will move up and down because this d3 is a variable so when d3 is zero so the location of this frame 3 will come eventually at this point so as d3 keeps on increasing the frame will go down because the frame is rigidly attached to the prismatic joint so this is the location of frame 3 and frame 4 is also attached on the same position because there is a roll axis about the same line so the z4 direction is also over there so we have z3 z4 marked downwards and finally we have the z5 axis which is at the tool tip is also marked downward so after locating the regions and z direction we can now assign the directions of x so x1 we have already identified because it's the common perpendicular between z1 and z2 so same is with x2 because it's a common perpendicular between z2 and z3 both are parallel so x2 is in this direction same is with the x3 but here z3 and z4 are intersecting because they are passing through the same line so this is the plane perpendicular to z3 z4 and the direction of x4 is also same because z4 and z5 are intersecting passing through the same line so x4 has to be in a plane perpendicular to z4 z5 so this is x4 and for convenience we can take x5 in the same direction as the last frame in order to make the last angle as zero so these are the frame assignments and we can also assign the universal frame let's take it as the base location so this is my direction of x0 this is my direction of y0 and finally we have z0 and we can also decide about the y-axis so the first y-axis is y1 so we can curl our fingers from z to x you can see z to x the inward direction will be the direction of y1 now comes to the next frame 2 so again if you curl your finger from z2 to x2 the thumb is upwards which means it's out of the plane of the paper so this is the direction of y2 similarly we have the direction of y3 y4 and finally same thing is the direction of y5 so this is how all the frames are being assigned so after carefully assigning all the frames the next step is we need to develop the ds parameter table so this is the definition of all the four parameters so this is the ds parameter table it is always recommendable to fill the table column wise because then we will set up one parameter in the mind and we need not to shuffle between different parameters so let's take the first parameter as the link length so we have ai minus one so the first entry says a0 which is z0 to z1 along xi minus one 
other way around let's recalculate again it's z0 to z1 so this is z0 this is z1 so both are in the same line so z0 to z1 along x0 so it's zero so then we have z1 to z2 along x1 we have so here is z1 here is z2 along x1 we have a1 then z2 to z3 along x2 we have a2 then z3 to z4 both are coincident so it's zero and then z4 to z5 again both are in the same line so this is the first column now next comes the link twist angle so again we have z0 to z1 along x0 so you can see z0 and z1 are in the same direction so angle is zero so then we have z1 to z2 along x1 so here you can see z1 is upwards z2 is downwards so there is an angle of 180 degrees so 180 degree this is special case you can take it a positive angle or negative angle clockwise or counterclockwise so it's a uh, you can mark pi so then z2 to z3 angle is zero because all the z's are downwards z3 to z4 is zero z4 to z5 is zero so all the remaining angles between different z axes are zero next comes the third column which is called as the joint distance or joint offset di so this di is written over here so let's say talk about uh, d1 it's the distance from x0 to x1 along z1 so here you can see x0 is this x1 is this x0 to x1 along z1 so we have d1 so then we have d2 which is the distance from x1 to x2 so x1 and x2 are in the same line so it's zero then you have d3 which is the distance from x2 to x3 along z3 so we have this x2 this is x3 this is d3 and we know this is a prismatic joint this d3 will keep on varying so we'll write always d3 variable it's not a fixed distance it keeps on varying depending upon the location of prismatic joint at that particular instant so then you have x3 to x4 both are aligned so this is zero and then you have x4 to x5 along z5 so we have x4 over here x5 over here so this is the distance d5 next column the joint angle so joint angle we know the first angle is theta 1 second angle is theta 2 third angle is a fixed one zero the last angle is theta 3 and there is no angle at the last so this is a typical degrees of freedom and now we have to calculate the home position that what are the these theta angles at the current configuration where the robot is standing now there you can see the home position if you see the angle theta 1 theta 1 is the angle from x0 to x1 along z1 so angle is 0 again x1 and x2 are in the same direction angle is 0 x2 x3 same angle is 0 x3 x4 are same angle 0 so all angles are 0 and this is a not a variable so this is a typical dh parameter table for the scara robot at this particular concept this will be calculated in the next slide so this is a frame assignment and this is the all the parameters which we have calculated in the previous slide so now what we have to do we have taken this table again and we have already calculated this transformation matrix which is the transformation from ith frame to i minus 1th frame if you recall this is the product of four transformation matrix so now what we have to do we have to take this row first row of uh, this ds parameter table feed this row in this particular matrix and calculate the first transformation matrix so if i index is 1 so for the first row this will give you 0 t 1 so which represents the transformation of the first frame to the base frame so you can see the yellow color marked with the yellow color so if you feed the first row all the four parameters in this particular matrix will get this 0 t 1 so we go to the next row 2 green color so 1t2 so accordingly we will calculate the third transformation fourth transformation and finally we will get the fifth transformation and then after calculating all these five transformations we will put them in an order and calculate the product of these five transformations in order to calculate 0t5 so when we multiply them all this is the final answer 0t5 which represents the description of fifth frame with respect to the base frame where this is a shorthand notation where c1 represents cos theta s1 represents sin theta c1 minus 2 represents cos of theta 1 minus theta 2 and c1 minus 2 minus 4 represents cos of theta 1 minus theta 2 minus theta 4. so if you multiply these and simplify you will see that this term will boils down to this particular term so this is the final result so now let's try to see the result with both the variants as i mentioned in the last session the difference between proximal variant and distal variant is that the frame will be in the proximal 
variant if it is link to you can see over here if we mark this as link to the frame 2 will be assigned at the base of link 2 whereas in distal variant the frame 2 will be assigned at the far end the distal end so that's the only difference everything for your comparison we have given you on the slide that you can cross refer and let's try to see in this particular configuration what is the final result so this is the set of dh parameters for both the cases and here the difference between the two table is there is no fifth row in the distal variant because there is one frame less and all the parameters values will same only these four parameters will be different which are marked as yellow so a0 and alpha 0 will not be there so these are the two entries last entry of this theta and this d5 will go to this entry d4 over here because you can see this is a d5 distance will be marked as d4 distance over so that is because of the frame notation so this d5 will be the same as this distance d4 rest all the parameters everything will remain the same let's try to see the geometrical validation so let's try to understand all these multiplications what we have done in the last case if you plug in the value of the home position and calculate we can calculate this uh, final tip transformation matrix which we can do it from the geometry also let's try to understand so here you can see the fifth frame the x5 axis is in the direction of x0 axis so we know this is 100 that is how we write the x axis next we have the y axis the second column and you can see this y axis in the negative direction of y is 0 so you have 0 minus 1 0 and the third one z axis the z5 axis is in the negative direction of z0 so we have 0 0 minus 1 next we have to find out what is the location of this tip from the universal frame 0 so this is the direction of x0 so you can see this frame is a1 plus a2 units away in the x direction so we have a1 plus a2 at the first entry then in the y direction that is inside the paper nothing is there so it's zero and then in the z direction we go d1 upside and d3 and d5 downwards so we have d1 minus d3 minus d5 so this is the final answer which we can get directly from the geometry it's like a quiz problem you can solve it and analytically we can solve it with the sequence of steps i have mentioned in the last couple of slides so this is the final answer and the same answer if we now take the distal variant using the same set of frames and using the ds parameter developed in the last slide you will see that in the same configuration you will achieve the same answer so everything will remain the same so the next robot we have the five axis articulated robot and as i mentioned i have given you the link description where you can see its physical movement in a video so for this first of all we need to identify the frame assignment so as i mentioned this is all five rotations which are already marked so this is the direction of uh, theta one about that body joint which is called a torso so then this is the infinite line about which you have this theta two which is called as a shoulder joint so then this is the next one which is the theta three which is called as a elbow joint and then you have the next the fourth one theta four which is called as the wrist joint and then there is one more frame coincident at the fourth level where there is a roll as i mentioned so you have theta 5 along this the roll about the wrist axis so these are the five directions of joint movements so next we need to identify the different frames let's try to understand how to do the frame assignment you can see the z1 direction is upwards and z2 is in this direction then next we have z3 this is z4 and there is one coincident frame over here let's say this is the direction of z5 and finally at the tip we have z6 so next regarding the origins so origin of z1 is a uh, slightly tricky because the origin can be over here this location also this location also this location also but we know that z1 and z2 are intersecting so the point of intersection is this point of z1 z2 so this is the location of frame z1 and so that's why z1 is marked over here z1 and the direction of x1 is also in a plane perpendicular to z1 z2 so it can be left it can be right so we'll take it towards the right this is the direction of x1 so direction of x2 is z2 z3 both are parallel so it's along the common perpendicular so the common perpendicular is this black line so that's why this is the same x2 z3 z4 are again parallel so common perpendicular is this blue link so that's why the direction of this is x3 over here and then again you can see z4 and z5 are now intersecting z4 is inside z5 over here so we'll take x4 as vertical in a plane perpendicular to z4 z5 and z5 and z6 you can see they are again passing
passing through the same this so that's why we'll take x5 as upwards and x6 will be taken in the same direction as the last frame so finally we will assign the y axis using the right hand thumb rule so that you can mark so then let's try to have this the base frame as x0 y0 z0 so this is the frame assignment then we have to develop the dh parameter table so again as i mentioned in the last uh, example we have to go column wise so let's have the first variable which is the link length so we know a1 for index i we have a0 so a0 is z0 to z1 along x0 that is 0 so then z1 to z2 0 z2 to z3 along x2 is a2 z3 to z4 along x3 is a3 and then z4 z5 are coincident so it's 0 and z5 to z6 along x5 is 0 so all these are link lengths then comes the link twist angle so the first angle you can say z0 to z1 z0 to z1 about x0 both are parallel so 0 so then z1 to z2 about x1 so z1 is upwards z2 is inside the plane you can see this is a clockwise rotation about x1 so minus 90 and then you have z2 to z3 z3 to z4 so all both are zero rotations then finally you have z4 to z5 about x4 if you are seeing from the top you can see it's a clockwise rotation minus 90 degrees and finally z5 and z6 are parallel so zero so then we have a joint offset we have d1 is x0 to x1 along z1 so this is x0 this is x1 this is the direction z1 so we go by d1 amount so then all the z's are in the same direction x2 to x3 0 then x3 to x4 that is also 0 the next one is also 0 the next one is also 0 and finally you have x5 to x6 along z6 so d6 is x5 to x6 along z6 so we have this which is written as d6 and then all thetas are theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 theta 4 theta 5 all are variables and last one is there is no variable over here and now let's calculate the angles so you can cross verify all the angles are like this next we have this is a slide where everything has been calculated next this is the all transformations based on this table all the six transformations have been calculated this again you can cross verify and when we multiply them you can solve it and do the geometrical validation so this is a slide for comparison of proximal variant versus digital variant now let's see the geometric validation so this is a simple validation we will do it for let's say do it for pose 2 so this is a simple one so then there is a pose 2 so where we have rotated the manipulator at a different location so now let's try to validate this so in this case you have seen the see the x6 this is the final manipulator x6 x6 is in the direction of negative of z0 so you have 0 0 minus 1 y6 is in the negative direction of uh, y0 so 0 minus 1 0 and z6 is in the negative direction of x0 so minus 1 0 0 and if you see from this 0th frame the location of this frame so we have in the x direction you have goes l2 to the right and l4 to the left so you have l2 minus l4 then in the direction of y inside the plane there is 0 and then in the direction of z we have l0 plus l1 plus then you have l3 down so this is the geometrical validation and now let's see the crux also instead of 0 t6 let's say we want to do the transformation from 2 t6 which means the description of a tool tip with respect to the second frame of reference so let's try to calculate this so now assume the second frame of reference as the universal frame so with respect to x6 so we have to see this x6 is in the negative direction of y2 so 0 minus 1 0 y6 is in the direction of z2 so 0 0 1 and z6 is in the direction of negative of x2 so minus 1 0 0 so from the second frame of reference which is a universal frame now so now we have to see in the direction of x2 we have gone l2 minus l4 and then in the direction of y it became minus l3 and in the direction of z2 which is outside the plane this is 0 so that is the final transformation which represents the description of tooltip with respect to the second frame of reference so that should be the final answer and we can do the same thing using the distal variant with the different set of frames and we can achieve the same transformation as using the proximal variant and you can clearly see that using both the transformations and using the both the methods either proximal method or by using distal method we have the same result so thanks to ashutosh and arnav thank you